Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Je suis Hans Rikhoff et j'ai travaillé à Schöps Microphone. Et je travaillais dans la développement électronique. Et ma français est très mauvais. <laughs> je vais continuer pour ma présentation en anglais. Thank you. So, um, because I said my French is very bad, so uh, I will give this presentation in English, but I think also other persons will do that, so I think I'm fine. So thank you to Michel for inviting me for here. And I want to talk about a little bit about the most analog thing today, and this is the microphone, <laughs> and also how the microphone translates the sound into an electric or an electric signal, and this will stay analog for a long time, I think. And I want to specifically um, talk about how the sound from a microphone comes and why mi microphones sound different. And I try to explain this a little bit. When you do a, co a recording, for example, like downstairs, a music recording, um, one of the most first things which happen there is, of course, you need a sound source, which is an instrument and, of course, the musician who plays it, which creates the sound. The second thing you have then is the room. So if you have a nice room, you will want to catch the character from the room or you want to record exactly that room and not, for example, something else which is very colored. So for great recording, most of the time, it's much easier if you have a nice and good sounding room. And then there's the microphone. Yes, because the other things are already there and you want to capture this with a microphone. And then one of the most important things then is first the placement. So where is the microphone placed? Is it directly in front of the mouth because you want to get rid of environmental sound and you really want to capture the speech? Or is it placed more far away? I think a lot of you know this. Depending on how you place the microphone, it can sound magically different on a piano or another instrument because also of the characteristics of an instrument. So microphone placement is really important. And of course, there's a third or a fourth point, which is also the mix, which is not only the mix um, you can create with your mixing desk in live sound or in post-production, also the mix between microphones. So how do you place them on stage? How much crosstalk is there between microphones? Which is also very important because if you have a lot of crosstalk, you can in the mixer you can just um, change the level of the whole signal, which has al already a lot of crosstalk. So with good microphones and good microphone placement, you already um, set up the mix very strongly. So this is also very important, microphone placement and the mix between the microphones. These are the few topics I will briefly um, touch today. This is the zero degrees on axis um, response of, of, of a microphone and a little bit uh, I will talk about noise, then the off axis responses, the directivity and then their applications in stereo. So we start with some of the on axis sound of a microphone, which can look something like this. Looks very good. So you have a very clean zero degree frequency response, which is um, um, available in the, if you have direct sound. If you have that direct sound, you can have easily such a nice a fr a frequency response. But can also look something like this. But if you look at the zero degree fr frequency response, you have just a little more high, li little more lift in the high frequencies, and it doesn't look so bad. So it's just a different fr frequency response from zero degrees. It looks quite okay at the first glance. And just to um, show this a little bit, I have a little audio demo where we had, um, we made a recording with several different mics. I don't know if it's if good, good to see here, but they are marked on the, uh, when I play a video which is playing the sound. So, and basically there's a, a professional speaker speaking to the microphones always in the same distance. He's a very trained speaker. He always speaks in the same level and loudness. And then, they're switched between different microphones and you can hear the difference. So different rooms and different microphones. Is it readable? I don't hear anything. Do I have to turn up the level? Ah, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, play it again. Dann kam die erste Eintrittswelle. Fauchend schoss ein schwarzer Blitz aus dem tiefsten Dunkel des Doms auf mich zu. Eine muskulöse Katze von der Größe einer ausgewachsenen Glocke und mit dem Gesicht eines wütenden Pavians. Ihren Lauf noch beschleunigte, indem sie mit den kurzen Flügeln schlug, die an ihren Schultern wuchsen. Dann kam die erste Eintrittswelle. 
Stelle. Rauchen schoss ein schwarzer Blitz aus dem tiefsten Dunkel des Doms auf mich zu. Eine muskulöse Katze von der Größe einer ausgewachsenen Dogge und mit dem Gesicht eines wütenden Pavians. Mit dem Rauchen beschleunigte, indem sie mit den kurzen Flügeln schlug, die an ihren Schultern wuchsen. Dann kam die erste Handlungsstelle. Rauchen schoss ein schwarzer Blitz aus dem tiefsten Dunkel des Doms auf mich zu. Eine muskulöse Katze von der Größe einer ausgewachsenen Dogge und mit dem Gesicht eines wütenden Pavians, die ihren Lauf noch beschleunigte, indem sie mit den kurzen Flügelschuhen die an ihren Schultern wuchsen. Dann kam die erste Angriffswelle. Rauchen schoss. So I hope you heard something. Um, and the same demo is available on hauptmikrofon.de, it's the, on the website von Helmut Wittek, and you can go there and listen to all the samples all the time and check out everything you want. It's available there as the sample player. And what I think what sh which is getting very clear at the moment directly is that depending on the room, you hear a very big difference in the sound, and also the same microphone in different rooms sounds very different, but also in the same room, same microphones, or different m microphones sound very different. This is something which is getting very clear here. And there's also no processing on all the files. It's just plain <coughs> recording, no compressors or de-essing or equalizers, just a plain recording. Um, what I want to cover just shortly is, because this is something often we look, is like the noise spectra of microphones, just very briefly. This is just a, le a relative level. It's not an absolute level in dB. And this is, for example, our CMC6 with an MK4. And this is a microphone of a competitor. And the interesting thing here is that it has less noise in the mid-range, but to higher frequencies, it's getting much more noisy. And this is due to a filtering in the electronics because they compensate the frequency response of the capsule. And what I just wanted to mention here shortly is if you apply an A-weighting filter here and look at this DBA values in data sheets, the red mi microphone will have a better value than we, because um, or this is a, um, a slightly one, because they have less noise in the mid frequencies where the filter is very strong and the high frequencies are cut off by the weighting filter of this value. So, but basically, if you want to record some, some very high frequencies like a quiet triangle or so, um, you, you can happen, it, it, it can happen to you that you have more noise with that microphone and not with others or with our microphones. And these are other two competitors in the same price range which have, in general, more noise. So. Very noisy or less noisy microphones with small diaphragms are very rarely. So this is us all, also all small diaphragm microphones and not large diaphragms. They are less noisy because of the large diaphragm. Um, to the off-axis sounds, that is where it's getting interesting with uh, nearly every microphone where sound comes from. Because you might remember this is the zero degree frequency response which doesn't have much to do or doesn't have so much an impact on the sound in general because it just has a little slightly diff different equalizing, so to say. What here's interesting with that microphone is then the 90 degree frequency response because this is not parallel or not even parallel with the zero degree fre frequency response. And this means that, for example, also reflections and other um, sound signals also in the diffuse field have a different frequency um, applied to them than the direct sound. And this colors a lot the sound in the room. This microphone will affect the sound of the direction in temporal, for example. And so, because the, the lateral sound will have a much other frequency response than the zero degree frequency response. And this is, for example, is something we pay a lot of attention when we're developing our capsules and designing our capsules at CHIPS. So you might see, for example, with the MK2, it's a very good omni just to high frequencies. It's getting a little more directive, but the frequency are basically to 2K, they are even the same, and then they, they, they go out even smoothly. And th this is the same for the MK4. So the 90 degree f frequency response, it's the green curve. It's nearly parallel to the z zero degrees. But um, what is the most important, it stays below it. This, so this is very important. And also the, the other frequency responses from 125 and 180, they stay below the zero degree and then the 90 degree frequency response. So, that's, so the perfect goal would be that they are all very even. This is very hard to achieve, but we are quite close to that. So this is why we get this very nice and even polar diagrams in our capsules, which creates a very nice sounding capsules, for especially in good sounding rooms. When we take, for example, it's just for a comparison, the MK4 with this very nice polar diagram, very smooth and even. So this is a normal octave smooth polar diagram and compare it to a large diaphragm microphone. 
This is one of the main di difference between the small and the large diaphragm mi microphone. It's the polar diagram. So it doesn't um, necessarily mean that the large diaphragm mi microphone sounds always bad. <laughs> it can, so, so it, it, but it has a lot of more character, so to say, than a small diaphragm microphone. So it will affect the room sound in a way which is unknown, so, but it will c c color it because the, f the polar responses are not very evenly and very smooth. They, especially above 2K, it's getting very wild in a large diaphragm because of the reflections and also the pressure effect on the membrane. So this is, um, then has a great effect on the sound, which can be liked, but if it's unwanted, then it's better to go with small diaphragm microphones because they are very much more natural, so to say, in a room. Which comes to directivity, and the directivity is a point which um, maybe something is not so well known, but, I've, but maybe so some of you know, it's the diffuse field response because this is directly linked to the directivity of a microphone, the diffuse field frequency response. You can calculate this out of the polar diagram. And for an Omni MK2, for example, you see it's very smooth and then it rolls off to high frequencies. This is why we have, for example, diffuse field compensated omni microphones with a high frequency lift <coughs> to compensate for that because the loss is in the directivity. The MK4 looks like this, so it's very even, but then has, has a slight boost till 10K. This is the supercarded from us, the MK41, which is nearly flat. So which the, 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 this is why, why a supercarded microphone sounds very nice in a room and is often used for indoor booming and sound applications or film sound applications. This is a shotgun microphone, he, here you see why. Because in a room, in a diffuse field, outside you have no diffuse field if you're working outside on a film set. But inside, the shotgun microphone rolls off very heavily to high frequencies, which creates a very, or a slightly dull sound, which you don't have, have which you do not have when you're working with the MK41 or a supercar inside a room. And then here's the Super Seamit, some of you might know, this is our digital microphone, with that we can apply through DSP and certain or certain signal processing, we can even reduce the diffuse field energy, so to say, even more down to um, lower frequencies, which is very handy if you are working in not nice sounding rooms or if you have not much time to set up a room on the set, which is um, yeah, kind of proved itself as a very great tool if you have little time working on a set. Um, another interesting thing, which is Maybe I think it's very in interesting, especially for music recording, is the polar flex. I think Schoeps has this for a long time, so lo longer than I'm working there, of course. <laughs> and uh, it's basically, it was a box where you can do a certain um, processing in it, and we now made a plugin of it. And basically what this plugin does, you can um, create frequency-dependent directivities. So you could say with the three, three sliders, I want at low frequencies, I want to be an Omni. And at mid frequencies, I want to be a carduit or nearly a super carduit. And at high frequencies, I want to be a, so something like a hyper carduit. So it can be between anything between a, 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 an omni and a figure of eight. And by that, you can create different behaviors. For example, you can create a microphone, like a virtual microphone, by a mix of two signals of a, an omni and a figure of eight to behave, for example, like a large diaphragm a little bit. Or you can work afterwards in post-production. It's a little bit like MS. You can have influence after the recording on the directivity and also then on the sound color, of course, and a lot on, and, and of course a lot of the a lot also on the sound color of the room. For example, the green, or sorry, the green, the blue curve here, the heavy blue curve, the solid one, or the thick blue curve. This is the <coughs> resulting zero degree frequency response, and the slight blue curve. This is the diffuse field or the resulting diffuse field frequency response, which results if you turn the sliders here in the way you want. So you can just work very creatively with that plugin and it's for free. And you can use it, for example, with our A to P clamp where you have then, if you have a CCM2 and a CCM8, you can directly start recording and use the plugin with that capsules. Other capsules are possible too, but these, are work, but these work better. <laughs> what I wanted well, to show, oh, yeah. it was too quick. <laughs> This is a, another short video, an audio demonstration I want to show you, which, um, which is done also in a room with a speaker and it re it's recorded sim simultaneously. And what happens here is we have different microphones um, and the distance to the speaker is according to the distance factor of the mic. So you might know if you have like the comp, um, with, a, with a card rate, you can go um, 
I think 1.4 1, 1 times more far away than with an army. And with a supercarded even more, and with a shotgun even more. And so, and this is the, the point where you have the same level of diffuse sound and direct sound. And listen to that. So what I think, which is very nice in this example, is that it's working um, very well with the theory together. So this is always very nice if you have something in theory which works very well with a practical recording. Because the direct sound of, of the voice, so the color of the voice is nearly untouched, but the room sounds always a little different. And this is due to the different diffuse field frequency responses of the directivity patterns. And this is, yeah, this is just a great example on how to or how to perceive also how this works. Uh -huh. So the, the last point I have here right now is theory because not also just the microphone position, of course, um, and also the directivity pattern of the microphone influences the sound a lot. Also, the stereo setup you choose chooses the sound a lot, <laughs> uh, inf chooses, inf influences the sound a lot. So if you, f for example, take an XY a microphone, with carduids, um, you can uh, calculate also for two capsules the diffuse field correlation, which is very important for also like if the room is perceived spacious or not, or as a, if you have a very wide stere stereo image or not. And <coughs> there's a way to calculate, and we, I don't know, if it, maybe it's a little too small. For an XY, you can calculate a DFI, which is which we call it's like the diffuse field image predictor. It's, it's a value for the correlation between the two capsules in the diffuse field. And for an XY, it's 0 0.56, which is very high. And for an AB, it's just 0 0.01. And this is why an AB or a white AB or also a Decker tree is often used in, as a main mic in classical music recordings. Because you get a very wide and nice image and a great room sound and then you can mix in your spot mics and work with that as a foundation. So this is also one other big thing, which is um, very important. And I can show you this right now. I also have an audio demo for that. We placed, oops, sorry, I just wanted to explain it a little more. Um, we placed this setup on different spots in Karlsruhe <laughs> and re recorded the sound. And it's basically an XY and ORTF, both with MK4 then a white ORTF with open carruids with MK22s and a white, a and white AB with MK2s. And then it's a switched in every scene, it's switched between the two, uh, between all mics. And it's ambience recordings. There you hear this very nicely. You need more level? There is more. It's not possible. 
Okay, maybe it was a little too quiet. Shall I show it again? So also it's like a stereo um, example. So I think the, the guys you are sitting right on the edge. So I think you, you didn't hurt the the effect. So but I, but I think yeah. So shall, shall I play it again? And you want to change or shall I continue? No. Okay, I continue. <laughs> so this is also on the website on the Hop Microphone website. You can go there and listen to it again. What it's um, basically shown there, but you will hear if you are in the middle. I think you you heard that that you. Um, here you clear the difference between coincident and spaced um, setups, especially in the room sound and especially in ambience. You hear a very wider image and which also affects the timbre of the recording. So also the how you arrange your microphones in the stereo and in, in the stereo setup has a large impact on how the sound is. So to the end, I just wanted to highlight a few products we have, ex especially for music recording at Chips. And this is for example, I think you all of you all of you all know this. It's the tube system, so it's a very versatile system and is, has an elegant design, which is also copied a lot. <laughs> so we have, um, but we have this for a long time. We have, I think in this in this configuration and in this look, we have it for over 30 years right now, and it's available for CCM and Colette series. And something you might not know is it's very customizable because everything we do is handmade. So if you want specific length or a specific combination between tube, swivel, gooseneck, or whatever, um, we can do that, and it's not much more in the cost also, because it's handmade anyway. So it's um, a little different and can then have a great advantage for you. You can also have custom colors if you like. So this is all possible, so just ask for it, and then we can make you an offer, and maybe uh, we, we, we can make you happy with a custom tube, just for to show you a, a little, a, a little examples, we have as a set. It's like the typical singer tube. We have it's a two and, ha and two and a half meter tube with for, for Colette with a CMC at the end. We call it singer because it's very often used for singers like Andrea Bocelli you saw at the beginning. Then like for a violin, I think so something similar is also standing there to record. I don't know the violin. I think I know it has an instrument adapter, but I, I saw it somewhere else. I have to look again. <laughs> but this is also some like a typical way of a longer STR and then a swivel and also like a tube for C and which is also interesting and um, we have also like a tube system which you can combine with um, a lot of length and different ways also with a transmitter where you can go on a lot of different transmitters and use the Sheps capsules wireless. So this um, this transmitter thing is called CMR. It's a little less from the dynamic range than you would get with a CMC6 or a CCM but you are wireless because um, we are, we are limited in the dynamic range because the power, the such transmitter supply is very limited. But you have still the great advantage of this nice polar diagram, so the capsule stays the same. So you have a very nice capsule, just a little less dynamic range and a little more noise, but you can work wireless. And you also can see this downstairs if you look at the, uh, at the video or if you can see this in the orchestra, we have a lot of instrument adapters which are also used down there at the moment for the live recording. For example, for double bass and also like here for, for a saxophone and which is here in this case also wireless. Um, and, these, and a lot of these instrument adapters are also available for CCM and Colette. So this is one nice thing um, with, with Shreps, you can always get a lot of accessories for everything. Not, uh, it's not dependent which version of microphones you choose at the beginning. So if you have CCM, you can get a lot of accessories, or if you have Colette, you can get also a lot of accessories, and always for the same application. Thank you very much for your attention.